Look what they did to us. They left us with this little walking booger. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 characters who killed TV shows. Do me a favor, sleep on it. Bye! For this list, we'll be looking at the most disliked additions to television series who could have introduced a fresh new story, but instead had an overall negative impact on the plot. Since plot points will be discussed, beware of potential spoilers ahead. Which of these characters do you despise the most? Sound off in the comments. Number 10. Billy Jenkins – Charmed Even amid all the magic and romance, what made this teen drama downright spellbinding was its focus on sisterhood. Thanks. Show off. From that standpoint, it's easy to see why cramming in a random, extra main character in the final season didn't go over well with fans. The inexperienced Billy felt shoehorned into the show, and that's because she was. Seems as if we have a bit of a problem here. Oh, yeah? You know, actually, my problem is, is that you're just killing my buzz. The character was basically introduced as a behind-the-scenes ploy to artificially extend a series that was running low on new spells. But it was painfully obvious that Billy just didn't fit in. Instead of a magical resurrection, her introduction only proved that these witches were ready for retirement. Whew, that was, that was awesome! Awesome? You almost blew the house up. How's that awesome? Number 9. The Great Gazoo the Flintstones. There's nothing great about this alien sighting. He invaded the final season of the original cartoon and crash-landed in more ways than one. I am the Great Gazoo, and I thank you for rescuing me. The Flintstones was never a realistic show, but there was a sense of homey familiarity to its simplistic approach. But unfortunately, that went extinct when this annoying green pest forced the stories and overall tone into sillier directions. Good. Gracious, what a ruckus! Now, what seems to be your problem? You are Great Gazoo! The only good thing about the Great Gazoo's abrupt entry was his unceremonious goodbye. After being written out, he wasn't featured in the animated follow-up, The Man Called Flintstone film, and that's probably for the best. One of these days you're gonna get yours, Gazoo! <laughs> Number 8. Paige McCullers Pretty Little Liars. In a show where everyone's a suspect, there's nothing wrong with having a few villains in the mix. Paige fit the role all too well, and made quite the impression through her name-calling, intimidation tactics, and oh yeah, when she tried to drown Emily. What the hell? I saw the lineup. I know what you're doing. But then a few episodes later, the two start dating. Yeah, it's weird. She has a lot she needs to work through, but instead of any sort of properly fleshed out redemption arc, the show rushes her into a romance. The end result is a toxic, unpleasant relationship that the series tries to pass off as cute. Even as adults, Pretty Little Liars preposterously refuses to let Emily get away from the girl that almost killed her. That was a long time ago, and we're all adults now. If there's a conflict, no conflict, Scout's honor. Number 7. April Nardini – Gilmore Girls Every relationship has some baggage, but this was more than your average carry-on. Seemingly out of nowhere, the overly energetic April appears and reveals that she's Luke's long-lost daughter. I'm sorry, did you say your father? Yes, see, science fairs have gotten so political lately. It's no longer the simple act of science being appreciated. There's gotta be a twist, a gimmick. Something flashy. That's all fine on paper. However, the execution left a lot to be desired. The issue wasn't just that she was insufferably annoying, but that the character was poorly conceived at a fundamental level. I mean, how lame is that? Very lame. Oh, I know. She felt less like a real person and more like a walking, talking plot device meant to create more contrived tension between Luke and Lorelai. Wow. I know. That's my daughter. I don't believe it. I still have trouble believing it. You have a... Yeah. Right. And what is she, 12? Yeah, 12. Gilmore Girls never managed to convince audiences that she was more than that. Number 6. Scrappy-Doo the Scooby-Doo franchise. There's a good reason this franchise only has one canine lead. But when the mystery machine hit a speed bump in the late 70s, poor ratings led to a haphazard adoption. Enter Scooby's nephew, Scrappy. Uncle Scooby? Hi, I'm Scrappy-Doo! 
Let me move. Except instead of a goofy, heartwarming best friend, Scrappy was an obnoxious twerp with a frustrating tendency of running headfirst into danger. Even worse, the pup's excessive screen time turned Daphne, Fred, and Velma into glorified background characters, and even led to their temporary departures. Hold it till I get there, Uncle Scoop! Da -da 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 -da! Puppy power! Scrappy boosted ratings in the short term, but it came at a cost story-wise. By the late 80s, he'd lost star billing, and he eventually became a thing of the past in Scooby shows. That should tell you everything you need to know. Scrappy! Don't worry, Shaggy. I'm just winding up to splat him! Number 5. Hazel What's Her Name 30 Rock Not even Kristen Schaal's impeccable delivery can sell these lame jokes. Of course, they might have been funnier if they were coming from literally any other character. I'm sorry, who are you? I was asking myself that same question, and I did not like the answer, so I made a change. I'm Hazel, what's her name? 30 Rock always examined pop culture with its tongue firmly in cheek, but it balanced it out with relatable characters and grounded struggles. Yet it felt like Hazel walked out of a parody cartoon, and not in a good way. If you want to help me, just keep an eye on Jenna. I know she's going to cave, I just want to make sure she doesn't do anything crazy first. As the doctor said to me after my hepatitis test, you got it, sweetheart. She was too zany to fit in, and not funny enough to stand out. Instead, her weird behavior often came across as brash and rude. That, and her late introduction to the series, left many feeling like the character was just a waste of time. Casey, I will do anything to play a villain in one of your movies. Oh, and the camera loves me. Number 4. Cousin Oliver – The Brady Bunch In what felt like an attempt to save itself from cancellation, this show decided to place an inordinate focus on one specific family member. Well, I merely found out that we're going to have an addition to the family. We're going to have a what? Well, six kids plus one kid equals seven kids. Unfortunately, it wasn't the one anyone expected. The Brady gang got a new housemate in the form of the eight-year-old Oliver, who was reportedly supposed to bring back the youthful charm of the early seasons. The issue was that Oliver had no charisma, ate up screen time, and came across more irksome than endearing. Instead of opening up new, exciting stories, he was a boring retread of the other kids without any of their heart. How in the world could you boys believe something like that? Well, I didn't at first. But then it got easier. It's something of a relief that he was only around for six episodes before the show got the axe. Number 3. Nellie Bertram – The Office to be fair, no one could ever truly replace Michael Scott in this comedic ensemble, but the Scranton branch deserved better than Nelly. There'd be no titles. Everyone has the same job. Same goes for me. I'd take your job, but I'd reject the title. A little unspecific. Everyone would be known for their accomplishments. Even when she left that job, her presence still felt out of place. She wasn't a bad character per se, but she was exceedingly flat compared to the rest of the cast. Unfortunately for her, in a show like The Office, okay is not good enough. Everyone meet in the hotel bar at 7. I'm not allowed to say it's mandatory, so let's just call it compulsory. She was nowhere near interesting enough to compete with, well, anyone else. Honestly, her shtick would have gotten old fast even if she had only occasionally been around. It's a shame that the final seasons devoted so much time to a character that was clearly a lost cause. If Ryan wants his baby back, please tell him where to find me. <laughs> we'll be somewhere in Europe. Number 2. Seven. Married with Children Ah, another new kid unceremoniously shoved into an established family sitcom. Fox, meet little Seven! Seven? Well, why did you pick that name? Because we had one, two, three, four, five, seven kids! <laughs> when the writers seemingly decided to double down on the show's title, they gave the Bundys a third kid to take care of with little fanfare. It's honestly quite apt given how little he contributed. Mommy, I can't sleep. Read me a story. Hop on in. Come on, honey. Oh, uh, no. Good boy. There we go. Now, Peg, where am I supposed to sleep? Seven, yeah, the kid's name was Seven, was so poorly received that he wasn't just written off, he was essentially forgotten. He showed up during the seventh season and then vanished not long after. I'm 
hungry. Well, Kelly's stupid. Nobody's helping her. Yeah. All there was left to remember him by was a passing mention and some photos being shown later on. You know it's bad when the series itself decides to forget and move on. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Walden Schmidt Two and a Half Men Not many shows peak nine seasons into their run, but few completely fall off a cliff as dramatically as this. I guess now is as good a time as any. <laughs> the series' original star, Charlie Sheen, was fired at the end of season eight due to behind-the-scenes frustrations. Instead of rebranding to One and a Half Men, the show killed off his character and brought in entrepreneur Walden Schmidt as a replacement of sorts. Oh, by the way, I'm Walden. Walden Schmidt. Well, it's nice to meet you, Walden Schmidt. Ashton Kutcher's comedic chops ensured the character wasn't hopelessly dull, but there was only so much he could do. In his best episodes, Schmidt still wasn't as funny as Charlie Harper was on a regular basis. So despite the clear effort, Two and a Half Men's final seasons were nothing more than a pale imitation of its glory days. I still don't see the problem. <laughs> Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.